Welcome, friends, to Understanding Steam Heating Boilers. I'm your boiler room detective, Ray Wolfarth. When you're looking at steam systems, there are two types of boilers that you're going to see, fire tube and water tube. Fire tube boilers have the fire and hot flue gases inside the tubes and the water and steam surrounding the tubes. Water tubes have water and steam inside the tubes and fire and hot flue gases surrounding the tubes. Let's start with the fire tube boiler because there are less versions than a water tube boiler. On the left is a vertical fire tube one pass boiler. These are more common now as they are easier to fit through the doors on a retrofit. On the right is your traditional horizontal boiler. These are some of the ones that you'll see in the older boiler rooms. These boilers have different circuits or passes of the flue gases through the boiler. The one on the left is a three-pass boiler. You can tell a three-pass boiler because the flue outlet is on the opposite side of the boiler from the burner. The first pass is where the flame is and does most of the heating. As the flue gases travel through the boiler, additional heat is transferred to the water side. Inside the first pass, or the combustion chamber, the flame is about 2800 to 3000 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature of the flue gases drop as they travel through the boiler and are typically about 350 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit at the boiler outlet. The boiler on the right is a four-pass boiler. These boilers have an extra pass to try wringing more heat from the flue gases. The flue outlet is on the front of the boiler, closer to the burner. Some of the advantages of a fire tube boiler are higher steady state efficiency than water tube boilers. They are more resistant to fouling. They generally provide drier steam. They're more forgiving in regard to water treatment and blow down than a water tube boiler. And they're easier to maintain the water level. They have lower jacket losses too because the tubes are surrounded by water. The disadvantages are they generate steam slower than a water tube boiler. They're subjected to thermal shock if the warm-up is not done properly. And due to the long warm-up cycle, the boilers must be kept hot in a crucial application such as a hospital. Fire tube boilers are limited to about 300 PSI. The water tube boiler has many variations and designs. These are two of the examples of a water tube boiler you might see in a low pressure steam application. One is a cast iron sectional and it's limited to steam pressures below 15 PSI. These two types, the horizontal water tube and the bent tube, are used for low pressure, under 15 PSI, or high pressure applications, over 15 PSI. When higher steam pressures are required, we have other boiler options. The first is the A type. It has one steam drum and two mud drums. If you see the red on the tubes, that's where the steam is being generated and it goes up into the steam drum and released into the system. The cooler water drops down on what are called the downcomers or water tubes into the mud drum where the water is reheated. A D-type boiler has a larger footprint than the other types. It has one mud drum and one steam drum. The fire you see is set off to the right. It generates steam and goes up into the top steam drum and to the system. The cooler water drops down the mud drum or it's heated again. The O-type is probably the most common you're going to see, and it has one steam drum and one mud drum at the bottom. The fire is in the middle. It heats up on the closest tubes and goes up into the steam drum. There are a couple advantages to water tube boilers. They have a higher capacity. In other words, they can have higher steam pressure. They can go over 300 PSI and allow superheated steam. You'll see these in industrial power plants and high pressure applications. They generate steam a lot quicker from a cold start because there's less water in the boiler and they respond quicker to changes in the steam load than a fire tube boiler. The disadvantage is they have a larger footprint than a fire tube boiler. The tubes are smaller and more prone to scaling. They have a higher boiler flue outlet temperature, which means they have a lower steady state efficiency than a fire tube boiler. It's sometimes difficult to maintain the water level, especially when the loads are fluctuating on a water tube boiler and the steam rates are also fluctuating. Load swings will generate large changes in the steam pressure as there is less energy to absorb these changes. The steam drum is relatively small and produces wetter steam than a fire tube boiler. 
If you find this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. My boiler books are available at Pronto Heating Supplies in New York, T.F. Campbell in Western Pennsylvania, and online at Amazon. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you on the next Q.